Jane Austen is arguably the most celebrated and loved female author of the 19th century. Her six novels, Pride and Prejudice, Emma, Sense and Sensibility, Persuasion, Northanger Abbey, and Mansfield Park are some of the finest works of English literature. Her works explore the themes of love and marriage in Regency era England, and readers can only wonder about Jane's own love life. After graduating from Trinity College in Dublin in 1795, Thomas Longlaw Lefroy soon began studying law in London. From December 1795 to January 1796, he was on a break from his legal studies and visited his aunt and uncle in Hampshire. Jane Austen was introduced to Tom Lefroy at a social gathering, most probably a ball, as balls occurred frequently during the Christmas season. Most of the information we have about this part of Jane's life is from the letters Jane wrote to her older sister Cassandra. During this period, Cassandra was away from Jane, visiting her fiancé. After Jane's death, Cassandra burned multiple of her sister's letters in an effort to preserve Jane's legacy. To this day, only two letters remain from Cassandra and Jane's correspondence during the 1795 holiday season. Jane and Tom, who were both 20 years old, enjoy dancing together at balls during the Christmas season. In a letter to Cassandra, dated Saturday 9th of January 1796, Jane wrote, You scold me so much in the nice long letter which I have this moment received from you that I am almost afraid to tell you how my Irish friend and I behaved. Imagine to yourself everything most profligate and shocking in the way of dancing and sitting down together. I can expose myself, however, only once more, because he leaves the country soon after next Friday, on which day we are to have a dance at Ash after all. He is a very gentlemanlike, good-looking, pleasant young man, I assure you. After I had written the above, we received a visit from Mr. Tom Lefroy and his cousin George. The latter is really very well behaved now, and as for the other, he has but one fault, which time will, I trust, entirely remove. It is that his morning coat is a great deal too light. He is a very great admirer of Tom Jones, and therefore wears the same colored clothes, I imagine, which he did when he was wounded. Both Jane and Tom enjoyed reading and discussing books. Tom even lent Jane his copy of Tom Jones, which was a particularly racy novel at the time. Jane was certainly amused by the fact that Tom liked to emulate his favorite literary character by wearing a white coat. After four weeks of having formed a friendship with Tom, and perhaps something more, Jane's next letter to her sister, dated Thursday, January 14, 1796, indicates that Jane was anticipating a proposal from Tom at an upcoming party. I look forward with great impatience to it, as I rather expect to receive an offer from my friend in the course of the evening. I shall refuse him, however, unless he promises to give away his white coat. To many, these letters do not show Jane to have been deeply in love with Tom. Yet Jane perhaps wrote these letters with a more humorous tone to avoid embarrassing herself, lest Cassandra was to read them out loud to others. Another possibility is that Cassandra simply burned the more expressive letters that Jane had written about Tom Lefroy, though it is impossible to know the content of these other letters. Jane finished the second letter to her sister the following morning, writing with a more somber tone. At length the day is come on which I am to flirt my last with Tom Lefroy, and when you receive this it will be over. My tears flow as I write at the melancholy idea. It is unclear whether Lefroy ever proposed to Jane, though both were attracted to one another. In a time when marriage was an economic decision, they were not an ideal match. Jane had no dowry, as her father had financial difficulties and had no money to pass on to his daughters. Similarly, Tom had no money and depended on his uncle 
to finance his legal studies. In fact, his family depended on him to, quote, rise into distinction and there haul up the rest. And so, by the end of January, the Lefroy family sent Tom away, leaving Jane heartbroken. Another possibility as to why Tom never proposed to Jane was that before even leaving the countryside, there were rumors circulating that he was engaged to another. Indeed, by the following spring, he was engaged to Mary Paul, the sister of a college friend. It is uncertain whether this engagement was in place before he ever met Jane Austen. Tom returned to London to continue his legal studies. Seven months after their first meeting, Jane and her brothers, Edward and Frank, visited London on their way to Kent. There was a letter to Cassandra dated August 23, 1796, from Cork Street, that suggests they stayed with Benjamin Longlois, Tom's great-uncle. Reverend George Lefroy in Hampshire was a family friend of the Austins and probably arranged the accommodation. Though the mystery remains whether or not Tom was living with his great uncle at this time, and if Jane saw him during her stay. Two years later, Tom visited his aunt and uncle in Hampshire, but did not visit Jane at all. However, Tom's aunt had visited the Austins during this period. In November 1798, Jane wrote to her sister a letter about this visit. Mrs. Lefroy did come last Wednesday, with whom, in spite of interruptions, both from my father and James, I was enough alone to hear all that was interesting, which you will easily credit when I tell you that of her nephew she said nothing at all, and of her friend very little. She did not once mention the name of the former to me, and I was too proud to make any inquiries, but on my father's afterwards asking where he was, I learned that he was gone back to London in his way to Ireland, where he is called to the bar and means to practice. The letter proves that Jane still remembered the boy she had formed an attraction to two years prior. Thomas Lefroy married Mary Paul in 1799 and they had seven children. Yet Tom did not forget about Jane. In 1817, Upon learning of Jane's death, Tom traveled to England to pay his respects. Interestingly, sometime in 1840, at an auction of Cadell's papers, a man named Tom Lefroy bought Cadell's rejection letter of First Impressions, Austin's earlier version of Pride and Prejudice. At age 94, before his death, Tom's nephew asked him about Jane Austen and Tom admitted to having loved her all those years ago, stating that it was a boyish love. Though Jane never admitted in her letters that she loved Tom, it is clear that she was genuinely attracted to him. Jane Austen drew many inspirations from her own life when writing her novels. Pride and Prejudice closely reflect elements of Jane Austen's own life. For instance, Elizabeth's close relationship with her sister Jane mirrored Jane Austen's close relationship with her sister Cassandra. There is even speculation that Tom Lefroy was the real-life inspiration for Mr. Darcy. In fact, Jane wrote the original version of Pride and Prejudice around the time of her flirtation with Tom. Darcy's pride and intellectual superiority may have been an exaggerated version of Tom's persona, as he was academically distinguished. However, unlike Mr. Darcy, Lefroy was not the heir to great estates or wealth, but Tom's family did expect him to marry well. Another possibility is that Jane Austen based Mr. Darcy on herself and based Elizabeth on Tom Lefroy. As explained in the 2003 biography Becoming Jane Austen by John Spence, Austen might have actually used Tom Lefroy's more outgoing personality as the model for Elizabeth Bennet, and that she based Darcy's character on her own, more reserved demeanor. 
Most theories about how Jane's relationship with Tom influenced Pride and Prejudice relate to Lizzie and Darcy. However, there are similarities between Bingley and Tom Lefroy, as, like Tom, Bingley quickly departs for London without having proposed to Jane Bennett. Later, it is revealed that Mr. Darcy had been the one who sent Bingley away in order to prevent an undesirable match, as Jane was of a lower social standing. This is similar to how the Lefroy family sent Tom away, preventing the progression of his and Jane Austen's relationship. It is interesting that of all the four Bennet sisters, the one sister that experienced a similar problem to the author herself was given the name Jane. Perhaps Jane Austen gave Jane Bennet the happy ending she never had in making Bingley return and propose to Jane. In 1802, whilst Jane was visiting some friends, Harris Big Wither, a brother of her friends, proposed to her. Then 27, Jane was relatively old in a society where women married young, and even though Harris was six years younger than her, she accepted him. Jane Austen would have then gone on to become Mrs. Big Wither and pursue a lifetime of marriage and motherhood. However, the morning after the proposal, Jane changed her mind and broke off the engagement. We do not know why Jane broke the engagement. Perhaps she simply did not love Harris and did not want to marry him. Jane might have realized that she did not want to be a wife or a mother, fearing she would never be able to achieve the writing career she dreamed of. Jane Austen never married. Because Cassandra burned many of her sister's letters, including ones that were written after Jane broke off her engagement with Harris, we have no way of knowing if anyone ever proposed to her again. It is most probable that if Jane Austen had married either Tom Lefroy or Harris Bigwither, the world may have never seen her novels in print. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and want to see more, be sure to like and subscribe.